Hey everybody, it's that time again. Welcome to Syndicated Pipe Club. As always, I am Dr. Alien 201 or Dave, however you want to however you want to know me. And I have Greg, the Badger Piper, with me as usual. How are you doing tonight, Greg? I am doing quite well tonight. How about you? Not bad. I asked you how you were doing last week. Just to, you know, see if we could predict the past. Because last the last time we talked, we predicted the future. And that didn't oh, work. Right. That didn't work because we didn't record an episode, and the only thing the fans, the, the listeners got was a 30 second spot for Star Wars TV talk. Because <laughs> that's what I if had I can ready. Tell, <laughs> yeah. If I can tell you that uh, about a week ago, right now, I was uh, driving back from, I think we had just made it back from Wisconsin, and I was getting ready to take my mom back home. But, uh, I was dealing with uh, some eye strain because uh, I just recently started wearing, uh, well, you know, started using contacts. And, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and whenever I get, like, bad headaches or anything, it's all because of, like, stuff with my eyes. Like, for my wife, like, if she has, like, a migraine, the house has to be completely silent and dark. For me, I it's not the sound that bothers me. It's just, like... So, uh, and, and just uh, my eyes being uh, super sensitive. And so, like, I spent a good portion of uh, the trip back from Wisconsin with, uh, like, a wet cloth over my eyes. But I, you know, was able to be okay after, uh, once we got back. Well, at least you didn't have to drive. I mean, if you spent most of the trip with a wet cloth over your eyes, you certainly weren't driving the car, so that's a plus. Yeah. I had to drive later to take my mom back, but uh, you know, by then I was good. So, which cob are you smoking tonight? This is a uh, Cob Nation uh, 2018 cob, which is made from a uh, uh, general general cob with a uh, uh, kind of like a vulcanite stem. So it's not one that I smoke often because it's uh, quite a big bowl, but uh, I kind of packed this the other day and just didn't have a chance to smoke it yet. But I figured, oh, you know what, I'll, I'll just do it for a um, podcast. So I'm smoking some uh, McConnell's uh, Honeydew, hmm. which is a nice aromatic that I enjoy. It's, uh, I enjoyed the McClellan. Um, the only one of their Sherlock Holmes ones that I was able to try was the Honeydew one because I thought it sounded interesting. It does sound interesting. Learning, yeah, learning that, uh, you know, Honeydew was a popular kind of like British kind of uh, aroma for pipe tobacco uh, back in the day, like around Holmes time. Right. And so uh, after, after losing that, uh, I did see that McConnell had a uh, Honeydew blend, so tried it and you know for an aromatic it's really nice how about you what are you smoking tonight i'm not sure i think it's just a bunch of tobacco that i had laying around it's leftovers from the uh tobacco hypothesis that i did uh over three episodes uh over six months a year ago Well, I remember that. So I'm not sure if, if the, the last episode was a year ago or not, but uh, that is what I'm smoking. Some of the leftovers. This was supposed to be smoked about nine weeks in, and that didn't happen. It got shoved to the back of the drawer. And when we moved, when we moved the office from the basement to the room it's in now, which used to be my bedroom. So you know, one to one switch. The basement's now my bedroom. The office is now what used to be my bedroom. But so where is uh, where is your bedroom now? In the basement. Mm-hmm. Don't tell the landlord. I'm not supposed to do that. Okay. <laughs> it goes for everybody listening too. Secret safe with us. It's one of those things. Um, I've been having trouble finding traditional work, and a lot of remote jobs have been popping up. 
And in order to do those, you need a place, you know, that can be quiet. And with the door shut and the wall that used to sit behind me now, behind the camera, the sound dampening is working in reverse of what I, what I need it to. So I've got to get something around me to dampen some of the echo and whatnot. But uh, as far as making as far as making it a quiet place to work, this would work. So yeah, and that's since, good. And since our car has been destroyed, um, I don't have a way to look for the the jobs outside of my hometown here. So I gotta have options available to me. So this is what right. we came up with. It's just one of those things that's not ideal. It's not what I wanted to do. I didn't want to move the office out of the basement because it was. Nice and sound, dead and perfect for recording and whatnot. And I had a nice little space set up, and now I have to do something else. But job search is more important than having the uh, the recordings where I want them. Right. This will work once I get things figured out. It's working now, so good enough. But as okay. for what I'm smoking it in, it's just a little, uh, just a little uh, basket pipe that I got at the local shop. A couple of years ago. Nice. It's called a Capri. I, 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 I'm guessing that's just the name they gave it. I don't know who manufactured it. It's probably a second of somebody's. Probably an Italian second. Probably. But it smokes well, so as most of those basket pipes are wont to do. Yeah. So, what are we talking about tonight? We didn't actually, well, you did, but I didn't have a chance to uh, watch the next episode of Avatar, so that'll have to be next week's uh, next week's go. And uh, sorry about the lack of background music here, people. It's not that I don't want to turn it on, it's that I can't. <laughs> Everything's recorded, right? Sure. Oh, everything else is recording. Yes, I just can't turn okay, on. Good, the, good. I just can't turn on the background music. Yeah, no, I was just uh, checking <laughs> now that it was uh, on my mind and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and that makes perfect sense. I mean, it would be a real shame to be seven and a half minutes in like we are now, and then you have to go. Oh crap! We gotta go start over. We've done that before with longer. Well, yes, whole episodes. That was the worst time when we would do that with the flash. Mm. Those were early days, though. Those don't, we, we usually catch it now within about 10 minutes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I, um, you know, thinking about, uh, you know, what to talk about. Uh, you know, we can talk uh, maybe a little bit on, like, what we've been watching, if we have anything interesting on that end. But, uh, you know even though it's kind of in the past behind us, I wanted to uh, kind of talk with you, uh, especially to, to get your perspective, because it's been, uh, you know, 9-11, uh, the 20th anniversary of it was uh, a couple of days ago, even though it'll be even longer once this episode gets out. But, uh, you know, we didn't really get a chance to talk about it beforehand. And, uh, you know, we, we normally don't kind of talk about, I mean, we, we've talked about like the, virus that shall not be named um and other things but uh i was just kind of curious uh, just generally like uh what you know that day was like you know for you like 20 years ago uh because even though like it was more of like a thing that happened with america like it had repercussions like around everywhere yeah yeah um 20 years ago when that was going on uh, my grandparents were and my uncle were at their trailer and I heard mom said something that was going on with planes and whatnot she heard it on the radio but that was the only thing that she knew so that wasn't really helpful but we had key to grandma's place so I said hey toss me grandma's keys to grandma's house I'll go over if it's if it's important enough I'll just be able to turn the TV on and find out what's going on so I, I turned the TV on in the middle of uh, one of the newscasts that were were going at the time. You know, the ones that were running, like, like for days. Yeah. Um, on whatever channel they had left it on, 
and it didn't make sense at first until they replayed the crash. So here I am sitting in my grandmother's house watching this and she had the habit at that time of turning her central air off so it was roasting. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I watched watched the crash in uh, a roasting Frankenstein of a house and thought, well, that don't take my nonchalance in this the wrong way, but I'm thinking that sucks. I can't even yeah. fa- I can't even fathom what those people that the, that were the families of those people who were in those buildings are even going through at, at the time. And uh, beyond beyond um, beyond the initial shock and uh, hearing hearing in the news, you know, as it was coming out, because as you know, 20 years ago, it was nothing was as instant as it is now. We still had 20 years ago. We still had to rely on televisions and whatnot to get your get your news and whatnot. So if you were like us and you didn't have a TV, you were basically under a rock. Mm-hmm. And you were li- relying on the radio and, and newspapers and things like that. And uh, um, yeah, so it, it, it was it was def- definitely different and. And, and as you say, not as impactful for uh, uh, the Canadians because even though we were close, like New York is not that far from here where I'm at. I'm only about four hours away. I can yeah. drive to New York and back in a day. Easy. If I had a car. Um, but uh, it'd be doable. It'd be doable. Just cross in Niagara. There you go. Boom. You're in New York, New York State. Another hour. You're in New York City. From here. And... Uh, Well, 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 I did feel for everybody. Of course, if you, you, you didn't, you were just a heartless bastard and you should not you know, be talking because that's just rough. Um, but the overall complications, like the impacts for us was just, you know, you know we our, our travel changed just like yours did. Mm-hmm. All the metal detectors went into the into the airports here and all, all, all that kind of stuff. But in general after a few weeks our, our everyday life was just back to being everyday life yeah understandable i mean i, I the way that i look at it is kind of like uh when uh like the two different tsunamis that have happened like since 9 11 like the one that happened in uh, the um asian sea the asian indian ocean yep uh in 2004 and then uh the Japan earthquake and uh, tsunami uh, in 2011 in the sense that, you know, that wasn't the country, you know, I wasn't living in that country and it it didn't really necessarily affect me and my day-to-day life. But uh, at the same time, I was just kind of like glued to the news uh, for like that week of uh, everything that was going on just because it, uh, uh, it, it was just so kind of like shocking to me, you know, like, uh, it, but, uh, with, with nine, uh, and I will say too, like, uh, I know at least Canada had, you know, was very like, helpful for the United States because a lot of international flights diverted mm-hmm. from their destinations in America to, you know, places in Canada where they were, uh, able to kind of stay and, uh, you know, people took care of those people. And, uh, so, you know, there was that, uh, you, uh, you know, that helped from that way. So, uh, and granted, I <laughs> wasn't a recipient of that, but, you know, just hearing that and everything, you know, it's kind of like, you know, that that's awesome and everything. And, uh, you know, your country was able to help ours out uh, so much in, in that moment. With me, it's weird because like, uh, like like during this time too, like it's here we are, like we have computers and everything, but like we're like we're right in the middle of like a transition, like you know we're I like what you were saying before, like we're past kind of like the old days of like uh, only getting like the news through like uh, you know the radio or, or whatever. Like, you know, it's, we're kind of at the very start of the internet age. Um, but it's not, you know, there's, there's no social media. So, you know, we don't, 
see like the news happening that way. And so it's still very much like, you know, we are still connected to like, you know, radio and television, but it's, you know, the internet's finally kind of like creeping in and everything. Um, and, so, and plus cell phones, you know, they're not, you know, the quite like what we have today, like with like the texting and uh, uh, just like having the, a, a walking computer in your pocket. And instead they were just, you know, phones and everything. Um, so it made, like, if something like that were to happen now, like, as soon as it happened, you'd probably get be getting something that would pop up on your phone, uh, like some sort of, like, notification. If not, you'd hop onto, like, social media and you'd see, like, people talking about it. For me, uh, at this time, I was in my very last year of high school, and uh, I was homeschooled for that. So that gave me a lot of freedom to kind of uh, do stuff during the day, because then I could just you know work on my work whenever. Right. And so my uh, I, that day, um, I got up with my mom and we went to picked up my grandma and we went to this uh, shopping area that had a uh, Sam's Club which they were going to but there was also a family Christian bookstore which uh, like I was uh, one of my it was one of my favorite stores like at at that age because that's where I would pick up a lot of my music scenes and uh, that's where I wanted to go anyway because I was looking to pick up some stuff so while I was there, um, I, I split off from my parents, uh, my mom and my grandma, went to the shop and you know, picked out some stuff out. And I saw that like that uh, you know, the two women that were working there, they were kind of like talking about like some sort of like event that had happened, that just happened. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, it, uh, I wasn't able to really make out like what they were talking about but i knew it was something that was kind of severe um, but i you know i paid for my things and then i met up with my mom and my grandma at uh sam's club and uh which i'm sure you, you have a sam's club up there if not uh, it's essentially costco okay yeah yeah we have costco yeah. there's no sam's club here i don't think yeah it, it's a basically costco but owned by walmart um okay fair so, enough so yeah, so it's a big, you know, big, huge uh, place that sells, sells like a lot of, you know, big volume items. And uh, you know, you go in there and like there's either I can't remember if normally they would just play like music or if there would be nothing. Uh, I generally think that it was probably nothing. But you go in there and like I'm hearing this like. At first, I thought it was just somebody talking over the intercom, but uh, it turned out to be uh, the radio. And you know, I, I, I met with my mom and, and my grandma. We're like walking around. We're trying to make out, and like all of us are kind of just like stopping, trying to listen, make sense of like what's going on. And ultimately, we discovered that uh, you know the, that the Twin Towers have been hit by uh, uh, you know, airplanes, and you know, it just was uh, like very just like a shock and everything. Right. And, uh, I remember coming up, uh, after we we got our stuff. I think we we might have grabbed lunch, and we came back to my grandparents' house, and my grandpa he was sitting in the living room. And he was watching everything going on on uh, the news, and you know, I, and now he was a uh, you know a World War II vet, just like mine, yeah, uh, yeah. And so you know, he had he had fought in the Pacific, um, and uh, you know, so he was experienced with, with stuff like this, and you know, they had lived through things like Pearl Harbor, yeah, and uh, other things. But you know, we walk in. And, you know, my mom, you know, says like, you know, oh, we're under attack. And he 
you know, turned to us and just was like, uh, uh, you know, the, he wasn't a man of uh, many words, especially at that age. But uh, he just kind of like shook his head sadly at us and said, "It's not good." And I I can't remember when, like, I knew that like the the towers fell. Um, but uh, it's a or if I if it had already happened at that point, because uh, I you know I jumped late into uh, it all happening. Well, yeah, yeah, so did the, I the, actually. The, yeah. And come to think about yeah. it, when you mention that, I think uh, by the time I found out anything was going on and got over to actually see what was going on, the towers had already fallen and they were replaying it over and over and over again. And uh, yeah, I had never, you know, never lived it through anything quite like it. Uh, the only thing I can compare it to since then was some of the eeriness with uh, COVID, like with the lockdowns, like when they first started it. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, that first, you know, that whole week, you know, especially like that, the first day, it, it was so bizarre, especially to like, there weren't, you know, I live by uh, O'Hare Airport, which is one of the most uh, busiest, uh, at, at least I, I was living there at the time, and which is one of the most uh, you know busiest airports in the world. And, yeah. And uh, you, know, you go outside and, you know, you don't even really think about it, you know, just because there's so much air traffic all the time. But uh You'd go out and it would just be like quiet that first day, and I uh, that for that whole week because there were no flights uh, going around in the uh, U.S. other than like military. And I remember too, uh, it was like two days later. I was with my tutor. We were sitting at her uh, her table working on stuff, and we heard, and she kind of like stopped and strained her ear, and she heard like. Uh, plane kind of like flying by and you know, it was a military plane so like we, we went outside and you know, watched it go by and everything so like it's you know the strangest thing i've ever ever lived through you know, obviously it's very sad uh you know i couldn't really talk about it all that much for a number of years even though i didn't know anyone really affected by it uh or anything or even anybody that lived in new york uh but uh you know, it, it still just kind of uh, affected us all, and it, it's just something that I hope we never see something of that scale ever again. And because of just how awful it was, and, and seeing like the pictures of like the people at the scene and everything. Uh, you know, to this day, like there's stuff of like, I can't look at pictures of the people jumping out of the windows or uh, hear it listening to like the audio calls, of, like the do people that are trapped in the building that can't get out. It's just, uh, that stuff's really sad to me. Um, but I don't know, it just, uh, this year I, I felt like really just reflective upon it and everything, especially now, now that I'm in like, uh, working with like a pipe band and yeah uh and in our pipe band we have a couple of firefighters and everything and it just uh i don't know it, it hit me more uh but it also kind of gave me gave me like more of a chance to kind of uh you know reflect on it more and think about it and, and just uh you know, give it the you know respected uh deserves no absolutely and one thing you can when you think about um 9 versus what's going on today mm -hmm. the leadership then was a lot different than the leadership today yeah yeah no uh, well uh i don't know like it's just yeah it's all different um I, I'm just re re referencing, yeah. of course, our illustrious prime minister and our uh, our our very smart and brilliant uh, president, uh, who is uh, always awake and always alert. 
not suffering dementia. Um, yeah, it, it might as well be the same person, frankly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, at the time I liked Bush. Now looking back, I uh, I don't blame him for what happened like some people do, but uh, I blame a lot of, I, I think a lot of bad things came out of like how he handled it. And not just no the doubt. wars, but, uh, you know, just uh, some of the things that were enacted, like the Patriot Act and, you know, establishing the NSA to spy on everything that we do and uh, all these things. And it's just for the name of safety. And I don't know, I, I think, you know, on one hand, it brought us all together for a while, but uh, especially considering now, like in these times where like the times we're going through right now are really dividing all of us. Uh, like in a complete opposite end, but uh, overall, like you know, they, it was just done by some really evil people, and yeah. uh, you know, I just uh, I hope that anything, something like that, never happens again. Hopefully not. It's at least much harder to be able to do that. So, oh, for sure, something on that scale. Yeah, definitely, definitely much harder. Definitely. One thing I wish that was much harder was, you know, calling a snap election during a pandemic. I don't know what he was thinking when he did that. Frankly. Yeah. Well, actually, I do know what he was thinking when he did that. He wanted to take his minority government to a majority government so he could just walk through anything he wants it to walk through. Yeah. But I don't think it's working out quite how uh, Prime Minister Trudeau thought it would. Because right now That's... the uh, two party, the two main parties are in, are in, are in a statistical tie. Mm-hmm. It can go either way. So even if Mr. Trudeau gets himself, and I use the term Mr. Lightly, very lightly, gets gets back in, he's probably not going to have changed anything. He's probably still going to have a minority government. And if anything, he's going to have... It's going to be a different balance as far as the other parties go. Because since we have so many to vote for, the vote can split in so many ways. But the statistics right now is basically going to have have our parliament balanced out in such a way that it'll be a statistical tie between the two sides, liberal and conservative. And not just, you know, the two main parties. There's two sub-parties that usually vote with... with uh, There's a sub-party here called the NDP, and they're basically liberals under a different name Mm -hmm. and they typically vote with the main liberal party on most things there's another party that just came in this year if they get enough seats called the people's party of canada it's not a communist party it's just they're more conservative than the conservatives are they're basically the conservatives from about 20 years ago from my take and they got a good uh, good chance to get some inroads this year because, well, of everything. I don't think if the pandemic had uh, happened, I don't think they'd be looking at some of the inroads they're looking at, to be frank. Because a lot of people are saying, well, we're not voting this way. So we just got to figure out who we're voting for. So I'm, I'm thinking what, what we'll see here is we're going to either end up with a liberal or conservative minority government with uh, supporting parties that could split and tie the votes and nothing's going to get done. To the point where in about two more years, when we should have been back at the polls, we'll be back at the polls again. Good times. This is where your guys' system has it a little bit better than us. Each system has its flaws. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying... The American system is perfect. 
But when it comes down to it, you have two choices. Democrat or Republican. Plus, you guys get to vote on some of the laws and stuff, too. Yeah. We don't. We vote in the people, and then we our hands are tied until the next time we vote. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry, that's not democracy. It's a modified dictatorship. Right. Yeah. No, um, I mean, we're having our own nonsense right now. Uh, uh, California just had a recall election where the governor survived, but uh, I have a lot of doubts about that election. Um, there was definitely some, you know, definitely some flagrant uh, cheating going on. I really hope that things are done to fix this system where we eliminate mail-in voting because it is just the way that it's done in America. It's he's so easy to corrupt and to cheat and it's I have, I have a lot of issues with it so for me I, I just think you know vote in person vote with an ID you know, that, that's the way that should be done you know, if you need to have some you know early voting but uh, nothing that comes through the mail it needs to be done in person oh yeah yeah like we, we we don't have mail-in voting here. You can't mail in your ballot. Like, if I was, it's like, say, just for example, say I was working over there in your country and there was no way I could get back to vote, I just wouldn't be able to vote. Because uh, what, um, the, the mail... What do they do with the... Oh, I'm sorry, what do they do with the military then? I don't know how that works with the military. I am. Well, I'm going to guess thing, oh. that they have. Um, they probably send. I, my guess is they're going to. My my guess is they're going to send ballots over to wherever our military is. So so let's just say, as I don't, I don't, I honestly don't follow the military where where our because our military sucks anyway. But uh, um, I don't know where there where there are deployments right now. So I'm going to use Iraq because I knew. There, we had peacekeepers in Iraq for a, quite a while, so let's just assume we still do. So, my guess is, in election year, and you got people deployed in Iraq, you send ballots to Iraq, but they don't come back. They probably get counted and whatnot there, and get called in, just okay. like just like they would do, like just like they would do from the precincts here. Like uh, uh, we had early voting. Uh, all weekend, this past weekend in recording time, uh, the 10th, 11th, 12th, and 13th, we ended the early voting. And uh, then the official uh, voting is next week, or, or five days from now. So just bef- like just a couple of days before this episode airs. So right now, we don't know who's going to be prim- who, who is going to be prime minister when this is over. Because it's not over yet. It is, yeah. but time travel, right? I, future me knows, but current me that's talking right now doesn't know. Yeah, well, I, again, I hope things uh, work better for you than they did in uh, California. One thing I would like to see, I, it's a complete long shot, and I will laugh if it does, but there are two parties here that are really long shots. The Green Party and the People's Party that I mentioned earlier. What I would like to see, just because it would be so hilarious to me, it would probably suck, but it would be funny to me, that the people People's Party of Canada gets in as a controlling government with the minority, and their official opposition would be the Green Party. That would be funny to me. That would be funny. Oh, wait, I just thought of a better one. Even better than that. Because this is this is why it's better. People's Party of Canada controlling uh, minority government as the as the as the, as the, as the having the prime minister and the Bloc Québécois being the official opposition. That would be funny. That it would. Because that party only exists in Quebec. 
<laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> So yeah, that's why it would be funny. Because, okay, how did that happen? That's the that one that would be, that's the one that would be, they'd be calling for recounts and who was cheating. And oh, for sure that one would be because there's just no way a party that exists solely in Quebec can, uh, can pull that off. Right. There's just not, there's just not enough votes to do it. But that's not going to happen. Realistically, that's not. It's, it, it would be funny if it did, but it certainly ain't going to happen. Oh, my gosh. Okay. And you just want to see the people that just, uh, that are, you know, always, like, seem to be around in government. Like, the you know, permanent party people just uh, lose everything and get out. Well, I guarantee. And if he's listening... I seriously doubt. Premier Ford, I hope you enjoyed your four years in office because there are conservatives out there that aren't going to vote for you this time. Me being one of them. Yeah. I have my issues with, with the way Trudeau handled things with uh, the federal level of, of COVID and I really have my issues on how Doug Ford has handled things. Yeah. Well, that's all I'm going to say about that, because I think we've hashed this out before. Yeah, no, I, rem I remember that you were a big fan of it. I never really was a big fan of Doug Ford. It was just one of those things that the guy that uh, um, was the conservative M MPP here, I thought was doing a good job for Chatham-Kent, where I, or where I live. And... Uh, so I voted for him, knowing full well that voting for the person that I thought was doing a good job meant voting for the leader that I wasn't sure of. Right. And until uh, the pandemic hit, Doug Ford was doing okay. He, is, in my opinion, is a good times leader. Not a this times leader. Yeah. So yeah, it, it's one of those things. Is and I think we still got about a year before we end up at the polls for that. So. But yeah, I, I think in in that year, him, he's not going to be. Uh, not, he's going to be a one one term wonder. Yeah. And a lot of it comes down to, for me anyway, he has said he's not going to do things, and then he goes and does them. Yeah. Like, for example, I'm not going to require a vaccine passport. Guess what we're getting? In vaccine passports. about a week. Yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> that we're going through that right now. Like, just... Uh, all this awful nonsense. And it's one of those things where you're going, yeah, know what? You know what? I just don't care. He's vaccinated or not. The list of the things that he's going, that, that would not, if I'm unvaccinated and I don't get a vaccine passport, the list of the things that I wouldn't be able to go and do aren't enough to convince me that I need to go get vaccinated so I can go do those things. Because, yeah. like, just for example, because this, this is common to everybody, no matter where you're at. If you don't have a vaccine passport or your your second dose certificate and ID, you can't go and go to the movies. Um, oh darn! I have Netflix, Disney Plus, Amazon Prime, um, Crave TV, which in American terms is Hulu, um, and numerous small other ones where I can get little lesser known shows <clears throat> as well that are free. I don't think I need to go to the movies because Disney Plus, hey, Shang-Chi is out in theaters right now and next month it'll be available for me to watch on Disney Plus. So guess what? I'm waiting. <laughs> I don't care. 
I can get, yeah. I, we've got delivery people that'll deliver food right to my door. I don't need to go to restaurants. I can have it brought right here. Oh, that makes sense. Uh, so I think uh, it was in France, like, or, or Paris somewhere. Uh, like the, the mandate was you had to, I think, have, I think it was you had to have like a vaccine passport to be able to eat at restaurants or uh, something along those lines. And uh, out of protest, uh, you know, somebody took a picture of this. There were a ton of people out on the streets uh, in front of these restaurants having picnics, eating at, uh. and with, uh, <laughs> having like blankets on. Like it, the street is just crammed full of people like sitting around eating food, hanging out and having fun. And all the restaurants are empty. With the uh, all the outside seating areas are just like completely barren, with no one sitting in them at all. Yeah. Wow, this became a very political episode. Uh, you know, uh, just yeah, just kind of talking about the yeah current events that are going. Okay, so we've had our political episode for the quarter, and now yes. we're going to not do that again. Yeah, no, that's that's not my. Uh, <laughs> it, was, it wasn't what I set out to do with, uh, with, with uh, you know, the talk about nine eleven. Just it was more just kind of like it's it just, know, it's just it's, one of those things when you're talking about nine eleven. Like, what, what are you going to do? You're going to compare it to what's going on now because it's about as close as you're ever going to get to that happening again, without that happening again. Right. Yeah. And plus, you know, it's just, uh, it's something that, like, no matter where you, you live, like, it was a big enough thing that happened that uh, it affected everyone. Oh, absolutely. Just like this is a big enough thing that it's affected the entire world. So mm-hmm. that, that's the same deal. Just on a, it was just on a slightly smaller scale. Right. But aside from the world wars, I'd say this uh, COVID uh, stuff is truly the first world event that just affects regular people. Yeah. I would agree with that. Around the world. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I think we should call it here before we come up with something else to talk about. (laughs) Absolutely. All right. So if you're looking to uh, keep up with us throughout the week, you can always follow me on Twitter. I'm at Dr. Alien 201. Greg is at the underscore Badger Piper. And there are a slew of other links and things and whatnot that will be included in the uh, description down below. If you're on YouTube listening to this. while you're there be sure to hit the like button subscribe button the button button and uh yes and uh send an email to reverse flash time at gmail.com there's so many emails that uh, we're trying to keep up with that we just can't even read any of them on the show but so uh just keep that mail bag just nice packed and full and sending us questions and uh you know we'll uh we'll definitely uh keep an eye on it for sure definitely definitely and I gotta go to YouTube before we sign off just briefly because I think I remember something um, just give me a second here we're gonna we're gonna sign off but I, if I remember right I got a shout out to do from there and they happen so rarely that I just remembered it now at the end of the episode so just give me a second to get in where I need to be and we'll see if I'm I'm right because I think there was a new person who had subscribed and I want to get that out out there before uh, I forget about it because it was a few weeks ago and I haven't been checking as often as I should let's see let's see let's see well those are comments I've already done those they're from months ago in the last 90 days. Here it is. Here it is. There is somebody. From last week. So. On YouTube. Booby Piper. Has subscribed. 
but for about a week. Thank you so much for that. I love the picture of the blue-footed booby bird that you have as your as your pick. That's great. Awesome. All right, so thank you so much for that. And with that shout out, we will leave you with good smokes, great entertainment, and we will see you next week. Have a good week, everyone.